Hello everybody, Steven here with Cardboard Coalition, and today I figured I would bring you a how to play of Marvel Zombies Hero Resistance, a Zombicide game. This is uh, from Guillotine Games, Simon Games, and Spin Master Games, and of course, Marvel Studios. Now, this game is a one to four player game. I think it says it takes about 60 minutes to play. Um, it's for ages, I don't remember, right? And I don't know where to look, so. I think it's 14 and up, your zombies eating people. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the setup. The first thing that you want to do in the setup, where's the book? You want to put out your map boards, which are down here. But to do that, you want to go to your mission. So now we are setting up for mission one, which isn't the first mission. Ooh, it's just mission one, All right? So let's see if I can flip to it quick enough. There's three... There's two, there's one. So there's a zero mission, which is the introductory. But what you would do is you would flip it to the page. It shows you how to set up the boards on what side, because these are double-sided boards. And then what tokens that you need to put out. It also tells you your bystanders, but for some reason in the directions, it tells you to set down the bystanders at a different time. So we went ahead and we put the board out. We went ahead and we put the tokens out everywhere the tokens need to go. So we have some objective tokens, we have some spawn tokens. One of the things, and I'll talk about it in the monster phase too, there's the um, one, that's your first spawn zone. You wanna pay attention to where that goes. The rest, it doesn't really matter um, because they're just spawns. All right, and then you go ahead and you wanna put out the Avenger token. So I put that out. Once you get your board out, you get all your tokens out, the next thing that you want to do is you want to get your decks ready. So you go ahead and you take your zombie deck, you give it a shuffle, you put that out. You get your zombie hero deck, you give that a shuffle, you put that out. You get the zombie trait cards, you give that a shuffle, and you put that out. Then you take the bystanders and you go ahead and give a shuffle and you put the bystanders out. Now, certain missions you're, you are gonna wanna check because in this mission we need to have pepper pots somewhere out on the board, but shuffled in. Now, where you know to put the bystanders, as you see here, is you have this symbol right here, right? It's a circle with the bystander. And you go ahead and you put down a bystander card. There's one right there in each spot, each zone where there's a bystander symbol. It's like a person with crossed arms in a circle. And then down here. So we got all of our bystanders out. We got all of our decks set up. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna pick heroes. Who wants to be who, right? So in this game, if you're one player, two players, four players, you have to play four heroes. So you pick your four heroes. Once you get your four heroes, you go ahead and you give them um, trackers and the color bases and the miniatures they go with. So let's go ahead and look at the Hulk card. So you have these trackers. You have the power tracker starts at zero and then you have the health tracker starts the furthest to the left because as you get hit, it moves to the right obviously. Your health goes down, down, down. So you get to a skull and then you're dead, right? So you go ahead and put those on. Whoops. Then you go ahead and you put the colored base that matches your health tracker on your character. So now Hulk has a green base. So we know Hulk is the green player. I guess we can look at it that way. Then you go ahead and you give each player their um, XP tracker. It's a little tracker. For most zombies, it's one XP. For some of them, it's a little bit more. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get into attacking and stuff. So you set it on zero and you go ahead and give each person that. The other things that I go ahead and set out are the dice, right? Um, and we set out the card for the Avenger sign, which is, which is right here. Um, the Avenger sign can be used twice. Once you use it once, you flip it over to the beat up side, use it again, and you take it out of the game. But you go ahead and set this card in reach of everybody then it doesn't say this, but you go ahead and put the doors out. And I'll talk about this when we get to opening doors during hero actions. But you go ahead and put the doors out. There's a broken door. That would be considered a closed door. Put the doors out. Then you could set all the zombies out if you want. But I just kind of, this is a nice little insert that has everything in it. A lot of times I just leave it um, in the box. But this has your 
zombie heroes. So there's zombie Iron Man if you haven't seen the unboxing. And then your regular zombies are standees. Still pretty cool little art. This is a brute. They don't call them fatties anymore. You got your walkers, right? And then you got your, your runners, right? And I just keep those close to the board so you can set them up. Once that is all set up, you're completely ready to go. One of the nice things about um, Simon and Zombicide in particular is on the back of the book, you have a whole setup so you can go through how the game works. So let's talk about how the game works really quick. The game is played through three phases. You have your hero phase, your um, enemy phase, and then your end phase, which is kind of a cleanup phase, kind of, and we'll get to that when we get to the end phase, right? So, a couple things that you need to think about when you're doing this, when it's time for the hero phase, heroes can go in any order, so any hero can go, right? Um, even if, say, one player has two heroes, another player has two, it can go this player, then that player, then this player, then that player, it can go this player twice, that player twice, any combination that you wanna go in. So there's no um, set rule, there's no first player and then how the players go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in it. Player phase. We will use Hulk, I guess, since he's the closest, to start it off. At the beginning of the player phase, you give yourself one power, right? And you're gonna want power because it helps you do certain things. Uh, let's see if I can get it close enough for you guys to read. You probably don't care, but this one it says, um, you, uh, you have five health. At the start of each of your turns, gain one um, power for each of the wounds you have suffered. So if Hulk was down here to four, if he got hit once, he would get two at the beginning of his turn. You could never max above four though, so just keep that in mind. So beginning of your turn, you go ahead and you give yourself a power up. And give yourself one power, All right? Then after that, you um, refresh your activation token. This is your activation token, but um, because it's the first round, it's already activated, and you'll see at the end of the round we flip it over, but you would refresh it if it's flipped over so you know that the, all your characters can have an action. Then the next thing you do is you go into what's called the activate superhero or activate hero phase. Now there are some things that you could do when activating the hero. You can move, you can open doors, you can gain traits, you can rescue bystanders, and you can interact with objects, and you can attack. Six. I don't know why I kept hiding my finger. Six things, six things you could do. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So when you move, movement costs, you have three actions. I guess I should have said that. You have three actions. Movement costs one action. So if Hulk wants to go here, that's one action, right? Um, if Hulk wants to open the door, so now we're gonna get into the doors really quick. If Hulk wants to open the door, it takes one action. Now, it doesn't look like there's a door here, nor here. Um, I think that's supposed to be a wall. It's just kind of broken. So it doesn't look like there's a door here or here. I'm used to older Zombicide, and if you don't know Zombicide at all, just throw this out your mind, but older Zombicide, you would put the doors there, and then you would open them, right? And this, from what I gather, it you don't put the door there. What Hulk would do is one action to come here, two actions would open the door, and you'd go ahead and put a open door um, token there. Now there are blue doors and green doors that are connected to objectives that we don't have in this um, mission that we're doing and those doors would already be out and then you would flip them, just flip them to their open side when a hero opens it. Now also um, I believe this is from the second edition where you just one action can open a door. So what happens when you open the door you have these exclamation marks. That means you spawn zombies in any room with an exclamation mark. So no exclamation mark, no one exclamation mark there. So what you would do is you would take a card and you would flip it over, right? And so let's go ahead and look at this card and what it tells us. So on this card it says um, one runner would go in this area. And how we know it's one runner is because no hero is above blue. Whoever's the highest color, so let's say if Hulk was yellow, it'd still be one runner, but if Hulk was orange, it would be three. And if Hulk was in the very slim red zone, it would be four runners, right? But right now, at the beginning, Hulk is in one zone. So what we do is we go ahead and flip that card. We go, okay, there's one runner. Luckily, we pulled a runner out. There's a runner in this zone. 
The next thing you would do is you would go ahead and flip over this card, which we luck would luck out in this mission because there's Pepper Potts. So Pepper Potts is right here. I tend to just put her card off to the side. Um, you can leave her card right there for now. And then you find the standee, which is gonna take me a second because they're in here. Nope, didn't take me long at all. So there's the Pepper Potts standee. I should have said the bystanders are in here too. All right, so doors open, you activate everything that's in the room. Now, Hulk has used one action to move, one action to open the door. Hulk has a couple more actions he can do. He can gain a trait, which allows him to take the top card from over here and add it, put it next to his card. Now, traits are a one-time use. Once you use them, they're gone, and you can only carry two traits on you, right? So here we go. It says, discard when attacking uh, and spend one power. Enemy suffers uh, negative toughness uh, to the maximum of one. Sorry, it's, it's darker than it looks in here. Um, to a, the maximum of one. So you can do unstoppable. You can get rid of this card when you attack. So let's just say um, Hulk chose that. That would give him a um, trait, a super trait. No, it's not what it's called. Yes, it's just a regular trait. Heroic trait. I can figure this out. All right. So that's another action Hulk can do. He can do a heroic trait. If Hulk decides not to get a heroic trait, what he can do... Oh, and... Once per turn, can you do a heroic trait? I gotta remember that. Once per turn, you could decide to get a heroic trait. You can't use all three actions and get three heroic traits. You can only hold two heroic traits anyways, but once per turn, you can get a heroic trait. If you play the older Zombicide, it's like searching a room. You can do it once per character activation. Once per character activation, I guess is the better way to put it. All right, the other thing that Hulk can decide to do is he can power up. He could spend one action, will give him a two power, which would bring him up to three. You could never have more than four, right? And you can do it, the power up multiple times, but it, sometimes it's just not worth it, right? So Hulk could power up if he chose to for two power. The other thing that Hulk can do is he can rescue a civilian. To rescue a civilian, he has to be in the same room as the civilian, right? And it takes one action to rescue the civilian. So let's argue that he's over here at this point. He can rescue Pepper Potts. Now what you do is you don't have to make Pepper, Pepper Potts run around with him. You go ahead and you take her card and it gives you a bonus. All the bystanders give you a bonus, right? This one is uh, once during your turn, you may spend one power uh, to draw a heroic trait. That's actually kind of pretty good. So what you would do is you would take Pepper Potts and you'd put it by your board. Now, if you happen to rescue another person, you can always swap these out for someone else. Um, same with the traits. If you already have two traits, if Hulk already has two traits and he decides to pull a third one, right, during the traits, he could just pick one of his traits and get rid of them or get rid of this third trait. So you can have two traits, Traits are used once and go away. When you rescue people, you can only have one um, bystander rescued and that trait just stays with you. It's an extra action. Now the other thing, there's one more thing that Hulk can do. Maybe he goes in this room and he wants to activate something. So you have these things. You can activate um, missions. I flipped it over, it's green. I don't think it matters in this game. Um, but you have... Um, you can activate these objectives. A lot of times you have to collect these up. This would give Hulk five points on his meter. So if Hulk came in here and used his action to activate this, it would automatically give him five XP, right? And maybe get them one step closer to whatever their, their mission is. Um, now the last thing that Hulk can do is he can attack. So let's say Hulk makes it all the way over here. There's a runner right here and he can attack. Runners take one to um, take to kill. Now you have this right here that gives you a couple things that are worth looking at. So you have target priority. There's a way you have to, sh um, if there's a bunch of different zombies in a square, there's a way you have to go about it unless you have a trait that allows you to do otherwise. You always have to attack the zombie hero first unless there's a trait otherwise, just a normal setup. So you'd have to do the zombie hero first, the brute would be second, the walkers are third, and the runners are the fourth thing you can attack. Now, this just talks about the actions that they get. We'll talk about that in the enemy action phase. 
Now, this is their toughness, right? So the runners and the walkers are both one toughness, right? Brutes are two toughness. And when it comes to the um, zombie heroes, their toughness um, is right here, right? So Scarlet Witch's toughness would be three. Now, so what um, Hulk does, he's in here. Oh, the last thing on here, sorry, is the XP. Everyone gives you one XP except for the um, zombie hero, which gives you XP equal to what their toughness is. All right, so now back to it. Hulk goes in the room, right? He had gotten there. Hulk says, Hulk smash, right? So what Hulk can do is he has a special attack. Everyone has special abilities, special attack. Hulk right now is in the blue, so he only has that first special ability. Once he hits the yellow, he would be able to use that next special ability, which for every character is an extra action. Once he hits the orange, he has a third special ability. He can still use all these special abilities and all at the same time or together without, and these don't take actions, though that's one action. Or if he makes it all the way to red, Hulk would have all of his special abilities. But right now, Hulk is in the blue, right? Because he decided he's going to fight this zombie. And um, the one action he has is right here in blue. Doesn't help for an attack. So right now, based on Hulk's attack, he has a zero range. That means he has to be in the same zone, right? If you have a one to zero, he can be here or here. But he has a zero range. He rolls three dice. And he has to get four or better to um, get a hit. So let's see how bad I roll today. Well, Hulk on this roll, whoops, that was a five. You guys saw it was a five. All right, Hulk would definitely get one hit to take out this walker. Now, remember what I told you, brutes take two hits. Hulk, if it was a brute here instead, Hulk would still be able to get rid of that brute. Now, if it happened to be... Um, a zombie hero that was right there instead of this person, right? Hulk would have to get three hits, right? So he would have to roll, um, whoops, he has to roll four better so he wouldn't be able to take out Scarlet Witch. And you have to be able to take out the um, zombie all in one uh, roll. I mean, you can have re-rolls, but you can't just put a little damage on and then someone else attack. They have to all go down in one go. Now, what Hulk could have done, let's say Scarlet Witch is there, what Hulk could have done is he could have used a power to add a die to his roll. He would have to do that in the beginning. Oops, then he's rolling four dice instead of his normal three. He still has to get four or better. And in this case, <laughs> yeah, here's all my good rolls, so when I play the game, they're not there. In this case, Hulk would have gotten three hits, enough to take out Scarlet Witch. All right, but let's go back. Let's go back, back to back to back to back, back, back. There we go. Where did they go? I just think I threw them in here. Hulk's just dealing with this runner. Hulk got something I think that was akin to that. Enough to take out this runner. So the runner gets taken off the board and Hulk gets one XP for killing that runner. Right? When Hulk turns over, he's used his three actions or he feels there's nothing else he can do. You go ahead and flip this um, token over that shows that you have gone. And then the next player, whoever chooses to go next, remember this is not a clockwise thing, just whoever chooses to go next goes next. Once all these guys have moved around, right? Um, let's see what we can do here to make this look more like what could have happened. Uh, one, two, one, two, three. Um, let's say they're all going to stay together. So they can go one, two, um, stay here. I'm not going to go through this with everybody. I'm sorry, guys. But what I'm going to say is Vision takes an extra with his third action. He goes like that, right? Give him a little extra power. Um, and then we have uh, Black Panther, which goes here as well, right? Black Panther's over here. He would have had his one activation and then his extra power. Or you know what? Let's do this with Black Panther. He decided to gain a trait somewhere along the line, right? So once all the heroes have gone, then you move in the next phase, which is the enemy phase. 
And so this is how the enemy phase works. If there are any zombies still on the board, they activate. Um, there are certain activations, and we have it here as actions, how many actions they get. Runners get two actions, walkers one action, uh, brutes one action, and zombie heroes get two actions. So the first thing they would do is attack, but if no one's in their zone, they will move for their, their first action. So this is a runner, they get two actions, no one in their zone, they move, because they can't attack here, and then for their second action, they attack. Now, with this, oh, I bumped this board pretty bad. With this, you can pick which one of these heroes is going to take the bite. And in this case, and if you have the game you're playing it, you'll know why, but in this case, well, I already explained it too, um, but Hulk's gonna take that bite. So Hulk takes the bite. Once all um, the heroes have or once all the zombies have activated um, that are on the board, then the bystanders, any bystanders that are revealed will activate. What bystanders do is they move towards the closest hero. So let's arguably say Spidey didn't make it over there. Pepper Potts would move into the square next to the closest hero. Now for example, let's say these heroes aren't in there yet and we have a zombie right here. Your bystander will not go towards your zombie, right? If they have no way out, if this is the only space they can go to, or let's say this is a space and there's a zombie, they will stay where they're at. Now zombies on the other hand, in this case, zombie has one activation, no one to attack, moves, no one to attack, they will go to the bystander. Bystander gets attacked once and they're done. So after the zombies all activate, the bystander can activate. In this case, you know, let's go back to how we had it. They're all kind of right here for this first move. Zombies right here. The bystander wouldn't activate because Spider-Man's there. Now, the next thing that um, happens is you spawn enemies. Actually, before we spawn enemies, let's, let's go back because this is the best time to explain it. If the zombie goes in here and has enough to attack, let's say the zombie was here, the runner went in one and attacked, Pepper Potts gets taken out, She's out of the game. She got devoured by the zombie. All heroes lose one power and they lose any trait that they have on them. Not any trait. They lose one of the traits that they have on them. They'd have to discard a trait because they fail to save the bystander. So that's one of the reasons you want to save bystanders. They only take one hit. Once they take a hit, you lose a power and you have to give up one of your traits that you have. All right, I don't know why I keep going back and forth with this. It's probably just wasting time, but let's go ahead and set them all back here. Spidey was in here saying, what's up, Peppers? All right, so zombies have activated. No other zombies activate on the board. The um, bystander's not gonna activate because the hero's already in that circle. So the next thing you do is you spawn. So how you spawn is you start with the number one. You just flip the first card. Same with the room. You flip the first card and you go ahead and read it. So we check where everybody's at. In this case, everyone's in the blue still, so we get two walkers right here in this zone. Let's see if I can grab two walkers really quick. One, two walkers in this zone. All right, then you go clockwise around the board. So we have this zone over here. You go ahead and flip a card. You have uh, all runners, extra activation. Oh, whoops, I'm reading it wrong. So we go to blue. This is an extra activation card. There's no one above blue, so no activation. They lucked out there. And then you go down to this last one and you flip a card and this would say we're in blue. So we get two brutes down here ready to rock and roll and eat heroes. Now, I gotta flip through because I didn't set this up right. Oh, there we go to show you. There are some cards to keep in mind. We have the regular zombie cards. We have the extra activation cards. Then we also have rush cards. So here's a brute rush. What that means, if this would have come out, let's say this one came out instead of this brute card. What that means, I'm getting myself all confused with my hands. So let's say this one came out. This means only one brute would have been spawned, but he also gets one extra activation. Now remember, if a hero's in that zone, he'll attack that hero. If no heroes are in the zone, the brute would move forward. So that is one of the cards that you would see. Another card that you see in here that activates something. Let's see if we can find it in here. Um, bystander 
uh, in danger, right? Spawn one bystander, then activate all walkers within one range. So if you get this card, if this card comes up over here, I guess this is just our example area, you would spawn one bystander. So in this case, we would have Happy Hogan. You'd go ahead and take his standee and put it right here. And if there were any walkers on the board anywhere, they would attack him. So if there are walkers here already because of spawn rules and he spawned, they would all, uh, they all get one activation. So even if there are walkers here, they would move towards him, right? So there's one card. And then there's one more that I wanna show you guys, which is the zombie boss card. Of course I get this all the time, right? Um, oh, that's an extra activation for zombie heroes. That's not the one I'm looking for. This is the one I'm looking for. So if you pull this one, right, this is a zombie hero. And you go ahead and of course, as usual, you look at what um, color you're in. Everyone's in blue, it'd still be one zombie hero. How that one works is you go ahead and take your zombie hero deck. And since we already showed it, I won't show any more. You guys can see the unboxing, see all the um, zombie heroes in there. You would flip this over, right? And you would go ahead and put out um, this zombie hero. So Hogan didn't get put out, but who got put out this time is Scarlet Witch. And she's, she's a little scary, right? Now, when we look at these cards for all the heroes, this is what makes them, let's see if we can get the focus, makes them kind of treacherous, is they all have a special ability. Scarlet Witch is uh, superheroes must reroll all hits um, in her zone. So if you remember that Hulk, um, Scarlet Witch show off, that's a, that's a one by the way, it means you got bit. Let, let's do the Scarlet Witch Hulk show off. So let's say he rolls four, he gets something that looks like this, he's in the same zone, he has to be in the same zone. Scarlet Witch says that all his hits, he has to roll again. Now he hasn't hit Scarlet Witch, very scary. Right, and I'll let you guys look at, I think Captain America is another one that's pretty scary. It's kind of fun, they all have their own little actions that they do. All right, so I guess we'll just leave it with Scarlet Witch got spawned there. Sounds like my first game where we were getting people everywhere. Once all that's done, you go ahead and you would check, I'm just flipping these because we pretend like everybody went. You check any end round conditions, things that might cause, that you might do at the end of the round. You check to see if any hero dies, you lose the game. The only way to win the game is to achieve the objectives, whatever they are. This one, it's to hit objective, is to hit these spots, collect them all up, and then exit. If any hero dies, you lose the game, right? To win the game, you do the objectives. So if all heroes are still alive, what we, or what I do, is I say everybody activate their heroes so we know that everyone's green and ready to go again. And then you dive right back into the hero phase. And you start over. And it doesn't have to be Hulk first time. Remember, you can pick whoever you want to um, be the first player. I just realized I hit this again, so camera went all wonky, awesome. But that is how you play Marvel Zombies, Heroes Resistance, a Zombicide game, all right? I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I got everything. I, I'm pretty sure I got everything. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. We don't get lots of comments, so if we get them, we'll probably respond, right? No, we will respond, I'm just messing with you guys. So if you have any questions, go ahead and hit it in the comments. I think I kind of hit on everything. Um, to understand how this works, I already talked about that, but it, you know, it, you can throw it twice. It destroys things. The card explains all that, but I'm just rambling on now. <laughs> I'm Steven with Cardboard Coalition. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.